It is time for another Y107 MU Healthcare's Ask the Expert podcast. MU Healthcare dedicated to helping you live healthy. My name is Cosmo, morning show host on Zimmer Radio Group's Y107. Our guest, family medicine doctor, Amy Braddock, talking about the strange symptoms of stress. How does stress affect, let's go with your skin? So what we see with skin is that you have an increased secretion of various oils that clog your pores. And so it can lead to things like increased acne or exacerbations if you already have skin conditions. If you have eczema or psoriasis, they're more prone to break out um, during stressful times. So it's kind of this cycle where you um, start to have these breakouts of these either acne or skin conditions, and then you get stressed out about that. And so that contributes to your stress levels. So that's why it's really important to take care of your skin, among other things, during times of high stress. So if you have a normal routine where you're taking care of your skin, if that's with a daily cleanser, or just trying to reduce the stress in your life um, to try to keep those levels low. Now, there's that saying about your kids, they, they give you gray hair, but does stress really give you gray hair? Is that true? Yeah. So this is kind of interesting because um, I always thought that this was just, you know, a myth. But it actually turns out that there's some evidence behind this. We know that um, early graying is usually caused by genetics. But if you have high levels of stress, it affects the melanocyte stem cells, which are responsible for that pigmentation. So the dark hair or, you know, the blonde hair, the non-gray hair, if that gets suppressed somehow because you don't have these stem cells, um, uh, then you're going to go gray earlier. So there actually is a link between stress and going gray. There's a lot of things that can help reduce stress in general, and we know that sleep is really important to that. If you don't sleep well, then you're going to be tired the next day. You're going to be stressed out. So trying to get good sleep is really important, as well as exercising and having these good outlets for stress is really important, especially these days with COVID going on. Doctor, how does stress play a role in how we perceive pain? So this is really interesting. People think that pain is pain and that it's not affected by what's going on in our lives, but that's actually not true at all. Pain very much is a subjective experience. So what is happening to you, the stress that you're experiencing can increase the anxiety and depression in your life, which makes your perception of pain a lot worse. We also know that stress tends to create tension in our body, so we tend to tense our muscles, and that in itself can cause these muscle spasms, which can also be painful. So you have sort of a two-layer approach to why you have increased pain during times of stress. You know, trying to find ways to sense when you're becoming more tense or when pain is affecting you and trying to develop ways to address that is incredibly important. You know, those of us that are sitting at the computers typing all day just staring at the screen we need to take breaks we need to stretch those muscles in our backs and our necks so that you don't develop that tension um, and that pain so I recommend you know every hour or so getting up and going for a walk getting some fresh air um, just to loosen up those muscles it's really important our guest here on our MU Healthcare's Ask the Expert podcast family medicine doctor Amy Braddock, as we're talking about strange symptoms of stress. There's a lot of strange symptoms of stress, but something very important is having a good relationship with your primary care physician and communicating changes in your health, your stress levels and all that with your doctor. This is really important. So I'm um, an example of a PCP. I'm a family medicine doctor, so a general practice doctor. We find that it's really important, especially now, for patients to have someone to go to, to talk to about their stress. So you can try to go it alone, um, you know, take some steps to try to reduce the stress in your life by getting good sleep, eating healthy, physical activity is really important. But if your stress doesn't get better, it's really important to talk to a professional. So we have lots of experience, especially right now, talking to patients about stress and anxiety and about trying to find ways to help them cope with it. Um, Sometimes that's with medicine, sometimes that's with behavioral techniques, but um, it's really important for people to know that they don't have to to go it alone, that there is professional professional help out there um, and that we are more than willing to to try to help our patients. Dr. Amy Braddock in studio with us talking about the strange symptoms that stress can bring to our bodies, our minds. Can stress be the reason a person is gaining or losing weight? Absolutely. Lots of people are talking about the COVID-19 right now, those 19 pounds, right, that you're gaining. So there is actually some um, good evidence behind cortisol, which is the hormone your body releases 
when you have increased levels of stress and how that influences people's eating habits and exercise. And then that causes the weight gain in itself as well. So um, there's sort of a number of reasons that people would gain weight during times um, of high stress. I've mentioned physical activity a couple of times. What's great about that is it can help reduce your stress levels as well as um, your waistline. So um, it's important to kind of treat both of those at the same time, and it just makes you feel a lot better as well. So you can kind of approach those through the same method. We've all been under a lot of stress here lately. This, this last question for you, Doc, kind of a, a big one. Stress can definitely have an effect, right, on, on couples trying to have babies? Yeah, we are starting to learn more about the influence of stress on fertility, and it can, in fact, make it difficult to get pregnant. Um, you hear stories about couples that go on vacation and they get pregnant at that time because they have lower stress levels. So it's kind of interesting how that can work out. We know that poor diet and excess weight gain from stress can result in increased levels of hormones. There's one called alpha amylase that makes ovulation, which is when the female releases an egg to be off. And so that's where sometimes women will talk about our periods being off or irregular during times of stress. So there's all kinds of hormones that get out of whack. We also know that increased weight gain is associated with a disease known as polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS, and that can also make it more difficult to get pregnant too if you develop PCOS. Stress can also decrease sperm count um, and cause erectile dysfunction. So you can see if both the female and the male partner in a relationship are stressed out, then that can make it even more difficult um, um, to get pregnant. So it's important for the male and not just the female to try to control their stress levels. Uh, Doc, as we wrap things up, is there anything else that you want to kind of to hit on? We talk, talked about a lot of the big things. Anything else? So I think those are kind of the big things. Other techniques that I don't think we've talked about yet, you know, we've been preaching the importance of self-care for a long time. So now more than ever, it's really important to develop a routine. You know, a lot of parents are stuck with their partners and children at home, and it's really important to try to find a space or time for you to just be by yourself um, to regenerate and um, not constantly feel stressed out by being in this contained area with your family members. And it looks different for different people, right? So some people, it may be taking a hot bath or going for a walk by yourself or just locking yourself in the bathroom and reading for a little bit. But it's so important, um, especially I feel like mothers a lot of times don't take time for themselves and then they just feel stressed out because they're giving everything to everybody in their lives but not saving anything for themselves. So I try to talk to my patients about making themselves a priority in their own lives. That's really important. So that can come up, you know, during your annual exams. We're happy to talk about it then. Um, or you can schedule an appointment specifically to talk to your doctor about these issues. Um, we are doing telehealth visits. So if you're nervous about being seen in person, we're also happy to see you over telehealth um, but it is really important to get that help because you can only go so long, you know, if you're not seeing the improvements, if your anxiety and stress levels are really high, um, there are treatments out there that can help with that. So I want people to know that they are not alone in this, that um, everybody is experiencing high levels of stress and that there are things that can be done to help them. MU Healthcare's Live Healthy blog features health experts, guest bloggers, and patient insights that explore today's most relevant topics in a very authentic and useful ways. Join the conversation at livehealthy.muhealth.org.